Hello. Today I'm going to just kind of talk about how the uh, saying <laughs> to each their own, uh, agree to disagree, you know, sayings like those seem to be completely irrelevant anymore. Now, um, I'm going to you know, talk about I'm going to try to talk about various kinds of films and genres. I mean, you can apply this to anything, like, you know, politics, religion, other things in life, but for the sake of the series, any, and channel in, in general, I'm going to talk about film. Now, you know, um, I'm going to try to be as diverse as possible here. Um... Now, start off with, you know, uh, Star Wars. You know, I talk about Star Wars a lot, so I, there you go. I'm going to talk about it a bit more. Uh, there seems to be, like, so much division with Star Wars. It seems like it has often uh, been there for many years. Um, at least as far as I've lived, as long as I've lived, not as far as I that doesn't make sense, but as long as I've lived, there's there's always been this sort of uh, divide. I love the first six Star Wars films. I've said this before. I've said I will say it again. I'll probably continue saying it over and over again. I do hate repeating myself, but I guess in some instances, some things are worth repeating. Now, I've talked about how I'm not that fond of the new trilogy, the sequel trilogy. But I've tried to make sure those who enjoy them, that's fine. You can have a different opinion. It's all good. There are some who date or hate the prequels. They dislike them so much. Even to the point where you'll get called names if you like the prequels. I've been called names. But whatever, I, I try not to call anyone names at all. Who like the sequel trilogy, I wouldn't want to call anyone a name. That's me, but whatever. Uh, you can think that's mature, you can think it's not. You can think, oh, you stick up for yourself. Oh, I do, I should say, well, yeah, you're calling me a name for liking the prequels, but... But people like who just like the original trilogy... They also hate the special editions. Now, I don't hate the special editions. Um, do I think the special editions should have also always come with the unaltered editions? Yeah, I do. That's just me. I'm sure others think that. I mean, I, I've even seen people who aren't fond of the special editions say, I could probably like them more, or maybe appreciate them a bit more if, you know... We got <clears throat> the unaltered versions properly on DVD and on Blu-ray, but George Lucas sees those as inferior versions, the unaltered ones, but people like them, but hey. That's just, that's George Lucas. He likes the special editions, thinks they're better, because that's his close to his vision as they could possibly get. Though I doubt his vision actually always had R2-D2 having rocks in front of him, or the or if seen with the Darth Vader before he kills the Emperor, he goes, no! Like, he kind of put those in to kind of troll people. who Kind of dislike every change he makes. It was like, there you go, I'm going to give you something to really dislike and complain about. <laughs> it's probably a bad impression. I'm sure that was a bad impression. Uh, sounded bad on my end. I can only imagine what it sounded like on yours. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so there, the Star Wars has often always been di divided. And it's sad, um, especially with the new films. Directors and stuff are going after fans who don't like them. I mean, 
and even Kathleen Kennedy, the president and producer of the new films, she's even kind of enabling it. And, uh, it's 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 sad this behavior is going on at Lucasfilm and is not being stopped and or corrected. Though granted, I said stuff last week that it seems as if there's word she could be getting the boot or is was close to, is close to, whatever. There, there seems to be word floating, but uh, yeah, until we hear anything official, it's just going to be rumors, essentially. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that's sad. I mean, granted, I'm not that fond of the films in general, but the, when you have people behind the scenes insulting fans who don't like the movies, it's going to be kind of hard for many to stick around and support Star Wars. Honestly, I kind of just want to end it there because I want I want to talk about other things, like, you know, with Star Wars, uh, to those who enjoy the sequel trilogy, we'll agree to disagree on thinking that you think they're good movies. I don't agree to disagree. You enjoy them. I don't. To each their own. Now with other things, like um, Batman also, in terms of this, uh, Batman you know, is a huge franchise, obviously. He has multiple franchises, you know. There's the Adam West f uh, series and film. And there's also the serials from the 40s. Um, but then you've got the other films. The 1989-92 films, the Tim Burton movies. And then you have the Joel Schumacher movies. People don't really seem to like those. So seems people are sort of in agreement with that. And you've got the Dark Knight trilogy. And now you've got the new uh, Batman with Ben Affleck. And uh, the DC, whatever this is, that their cinematic universe, the Justice League, and you've got people who are divisive on what's the most accurate Batman or what's the best version of Batman, and this and that. Some will even bring up the animated series. I believe I've said before I'm not that fond of the animated series myself. Sacrilege, I know. But growing up in the 90s, I just, I don't know, in terms of comic book films, or comic book characters and superhero characters, not just films, because I did watch the Adam West show, the Batman show, growing up. As a kid, I always, I always enjoyed when you could actually see an actor playing the character. I like seeing someone being Batman, being the Joker, being whoever else was in uh, said Batman film or TV show. That's just me. That's how I was back then and I am now. I, I haven't changed in that regard. I... I just like it when there's a... I like live action. That's how I like my uh, superheroes, comic book characters represented personally. Um, I guess you could say there's some that could never, I guess, be live action versions of our comic book co counterparts and... Sure, in that regard, animation would be great, but in terms of, like, Batman or Superman or anything like that, I enjoy the live-action more than the animated versions, personally. However, even with this, uh, I will say that Mark Hamill as the Joker is very good. I do love the Dark Knight trilogy, and I loved Heath Ledger, so... Yes, he is, I would say he is my favorite. Joker. Just as Bat uh, Christian Bale is my favorite Batman and Bruce Wayne. 
for me with Batman and Bruce Wayne, that was the version I always wanted to see. A very dark, gritty version of Batman. That's the version I wanted, and you know, he's intense, but not too intense. That was the version I always wanted as a kid. And as a kid, I my favorite Batman was Adam West. Version, go figure. I wanted a dark, I wanted a dark and version. You would have thought, oh, my favorite Batman would have been, you know, Michael Keaton. But I mean, I do like Michael Keaton's Batman. I thought it was a very fine Batman. But, you know, uh, he, he, he was never my top favorite. Uh, until Christian Bale came along, it was Adam West. But looking at Christian Bale, he really seemed to get the character. He got Bruce Wayne and Batman. And for me, uh, Bruce Wayne is just as important. Um, you know, I, you need to care about Bruce Wayne to truly care about Batman because if you can't care a whole lot about the man behind the mask, the cowl, the cape, whatever you want to try and describe him, that character as, how are you going to truly care about Batman? Now, people have said, oh, he, he's a, Christian Bale's a great Bruce Wayne, the best ever. Uh, Michael Keaton's the best Batman. No one will be better than him. To me, he was... Bale was the best Bruce Wayne and Batman. And the main thing I always hear when a criticism ever comes up with Christian Bale, I rarely ever hear and or see or read anything about his performance exactly. Never really anything of what he did wrong as Batman. Some things say, oh, the fighting is... Well, it's a very specific fight. Fighting style. Um, I can find it here for you. Do, 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 do. KZ Fighting Method. KFM. So, yes. That's the fighting style used in the Dark Knight trilogy. But again, like, well, what's that have to do exactly with his performance as a whole? It's how he fights. It's how Christopher Nolan, that's the fighting style Nolan chose. If anything, take that up with Nolan. Because uh, when you actually look at videos of this type of fighting, it's actually very good. It's a very specific and different fighting style. Then one would just be like a, like a, I guess a street fighter of sorts of Gotham. Uh, but you know, I've rarely ever found people complain about his actual performance as a whole. What they always complain about is his voice as Batman, and in his Batman voice, they say, "Who well, was the best in Batman Begins?" But then he changed, and it sucked. For the last two films, blah blah blah. I mean, he held back a little bit in Dark Knight Rises, but was still proud and couldn't hear anything. First off, that's just nonsense. You can hear it. If you actually can't, you're either deaf or you've got a lot of earwax in your ears and need them clean. People complain because it's a different take, obviously. Though, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, Christian Bale always used the exact same Batman voice in all three films. The difference in the last two films uh, from the first is an effect was added onto his voice. Why was this done? I don't know. I've never seen a reason or any kind of featurette or anything in a documentary or interview with Christopher Nolan or anyone in the editing or sound department as to why this decision was made. Maybe Nolan wanted his voice to sound more intense. And even though the voice he gave Batman was really good and it's different from Bruce Wayne's, so you're not able to 
because because that's another thing that I really think is good about Christian Bale's Batman. He really truly made his voice sound different than what it is as Bruce Wayne. Sound like this, or something of or that kind, gravelly and all that. You know, that's not a perfect rendition of it. I could probably do a better one, but this was just off the cuff. But you know what I mean. It was very different. It was a gruff, growly kind of voice. And in some interp incarnations of the comics before that version of Batman came out, I remember reading, there's like a, like, in some of the captions, that his voice was described as a gruff growl. And Bale gave that to Batman. Um, and Kevin Conroy, yeah, there's he switches his Batman voice to his Bruce Wayne voice. But really, all it is is him changing the tempo. Or, no, tempo? I don't know. But not tempo. You know what I mean. He changes the level, pitch level. I don't know if that's tempo or not, whatever. It's more music to be kind of thing, but he changes the level of his voice. Like, Bruce Wayne's a bit higher than Batman's lower. Yet, yeah, well, if you actually really pay attention and hear, you can tell it's the same exact person. Honestly. And uh, with Bale, though, it's this gravelly, dark voice. Yeah, it doesn't sound anything... Like Bruce Wayne, it's his voice he puts on as Batman. Uh, but some people just don't like Christian Bale's Batman. They don't like the Dark Knight trilogy. They don't like really anything in that trilogy. And look, that's fine. I love it. To each their own. You don't need to. You don't have to love it. But I do. That's all fine. You can like Michael Keaton's Batman the best. You can like Adam West's Batman the best. You can like uh, Ben Affleck's the best. Or Val Kilmer or any of the two Batmans from the series. Or maybe you like George Clooney's the best. I, I don't know why one would exactly, because that film he was in wasn't good and he... To me, he just walked through his role, didn't really seem to care, didn't really put a whole lot of emotion into it. He was kind of just there in a bat suit with nipples, with crotch and butt shots. Or maybe you, you like it, the animated versions better. Uh, you might like Kevin Conroy the best. It's all fine and dandy if you don't agree with me, you don't think like me, we don't need to think exactly alike. I make these kind of videos because like, I like movies. I like talking about movies and I like making movies. It's fun. It's entertaining. I like being entertained for a couple of hours. I'm sure most people do. Sorry, I messed with my hair. It's bothering me a bit, but anyway. Now, um, this next thing is like a Friday the 13th. Now, you know, there's a lot of... I'm going to talk about mostly specifically like uh, Jason Voorhees. As, sort of like what I did with Batman. I focus mostly on Christian Bale. As, as that example. Well, for this, I'm going to talk about Jason Voorhees. Um, now we could talk about the films, but fans seem to have it that the first four were truly the best in terms of the story. Um, or at least overall, the story, the, the first eight really were the best in that regard because it told the story. Even though eight is not the most beloved film, I don't mind eight. It's not my favorite, but I don't rank it as the worst film in this series, personally. Um, it, uh, and even Jason X, which also gets a bad reputation, or has a bad rap, or whatever, 
it's a cheesy film. It's fun. It's like you look at it as so bad it's good. Though, uh, in those two examples of what the worst films are, Kane Hodder was Jason Voorhees. And he was fantastic. He's amazing. Some people don't like his Jason, though. Some think uh, the second Jason, uh, the, uh, uh, Steve Dash, was the best Jason ever. That's fine. I'm going to say all the Jasons really were good. Um, going to be honest. Uh, they all had their... They all were really good. They all played their parts very well. My favorite, though, is... It's, a, it's between Ted White and Kane Hodder. Now, Ted White... He played Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th 4. And Friday the 13th Part 4 is my favorite in the series. I just love that film, and I love the way White portrayed him. He was amazing. He just There's just something about it that, to me, enhances the film. Outside of the story and the other acting that's also great, I think Part 4 has some of the best acting in the entire franchise, or at least the original run of the, of the first eight. I think it has some of the best acting from other characters. You had Crispin Glover and uh, Corey Feldman, two actors who went on to do other big things. You know, Goonies and Back to the Future were those two actors, respectively. They were in, the same, in those movies together, but, you know, Glover did Back to the Future and Film and Goonies. But, you know, they they, 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 you know, that film was enhanced because it was supposed to be the last film of the series, and White really was amazing. He portrayed Jason Voorhees so incredibly well that I, I was just like, man, this just makes the film even better. I, I, I just love re-watching it. It's, it's, just, it's a great film. Great performance by Ted White. And, um, yeah, I just... I enjoy it, but uh, Kane Hodder is tied for my... for first place for me as well. Um, you know, he played Jason four times. I guess five if you want to count the video game. But in terms of films, he... he played Jason, he established some of the certain movements that are kind of identifiable like ticks. He also kind of does this, he does this breathing. And there's, uh, and there's sort of an intensity there that he gives Jason that others haven't uh, given him. And uh, it's it's quite a a feat, and even though they say, oh, Kane Hodder, he was in the worst Friday the 13th films ever, oh, how can he be the best? Well, people seem to really, of the four, part seven it seems to be the most uh, liked and enjoyed in terms of a, of a quality film of those four. That seems to be the one that's the pick. He, you know, he was the first to reprise that role. So in a way, people are going to say he is the best, or at least one of the best. Um, Ken Kurzinger was all right in Freddy vs. Jason. Um, I think uh, Hodder should have played Jason in that film, too. He kind of got screwed. But people have a different opinion. And again, with Star Wars or Batman, I've seen people insult people for having a different view. Whoa, I can't hurt. I like uh, C.J. Graham. I like Richard Broker. I like Steve Dash. I like Ted White. I like Ari Lehman, even though he was Jason at the very end of the first film. He was just there for, you know, uh, uh, essentially a cameo. They're shown drowning and then shown up 
the very end grabbing Alice and dragging her into the lake. I mean, there's other Jasons too, but, you know, Tom Morga. <clears throat> He uh, played the hallucination uh, uh, Jason in Dreams. And yeah, and Kane Hodder, King Kurzinger. Derek Mears, yeah, Derek Mears was very good in the reboot, I thought. Um, I know that film is very sort of mixed, too, with fans. Some people love it, some people hate it. I enjoyed the reboot. Out of all the reboots that were going on during that time, I think it was the best. It, took, it wasn't a remake, because if it was a remake, Jason would be a kid. Grab and hurt the girl and pulling her into the lake at the end. If it was a remake. But they just like took some of the best elements from like the first four films and combined it into one movie, set it in modern day, or I guess what was modern day back in two thousand eight, nine, and made it and made something fairly different from the typical horror remake reboots going on around that time and uh, you know the films you know some say part four is the best some say part six some say the original friday the 13th and i love the original friday the 13th but when you actually look at it on its own yeah it's an entertaining film especially when mrs Voorhees comes in and in the jason um but really the original film is really only truly beloved and as, as popular as it is because of all the sequels. The sequels truly help flesh out this universe that first film started. Now granted, I know it was supposed to be, or at least thought of as an anthology series. Sort of like how John Carpenter, if they made more Halloweens, that should have been, it should have been different Halloweens every year without Michael Myers or Dr. Loomis or anything. He was gone. Michael Myers was gone. Not dead. There you go. With, uh... Friday the 13th, sort of similar in regards of a sequel. They're gonna have... Like, oh, it's Friday the 13th. Something else has happened. Something else horrifying happened. Here's what it is. It's not Jason Voorhees seeking revenge for the death of his mother and just killing people that come to Camp Crystal Lake. It's something new. It's a different story. And uh, that could have been cool. Could have been interesting. But would it have been as iconic? Probably not. Franchises might not have been as beloved as they are now. Both Friday the 13th and Halloween. So, I know there's some who think, you know, uh, maybe it should have been like that because, you know, especially Friday the 13th, that's gone on so long. It's like, wow. Almost have 13 films. I say almost because we were so close of getting it. And a producer wants to make another film, but the lawsuit and all. Basically, I'm trying to wrap this up and say, you know, we can all have our views and opinions on this or that. Well, even with horror. Uh, some people just don't like horror movies. And that's fine. It's all fine. It's all good. To each their own. I don't mind horror films. Some of you might just dislike them. I like Star Wars, some of you might not like Star Wars. I like Batman, you guys might not like Batman. Or maybe you do like this stuff, but you disagree with my assessment on things. 
movies. Maybe you think the prequels suck. But a sequel trilogy is the best. Maybe you think Ted White or and or Kane Hodder were the worst Jason Voorheeses. Or you think Christian Bale and the Dark Knight trilogy as a whole were just garbage. You might agree with me, or you might disagree. And I know I didn't go all that in depth, but... I have so many videos regarding Star Wars, I didn't want to just make this a Star Wars video. And I kind of want to touch upon horror again. And, uh, I don't know. It's been a bit of a while since I've talked about Batman, too. So, there you go. Uh, it's been a little over 30 minutes, so, uh, I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, I said my piece on all this, really. And there you go. Shall see you all next time. Hope you have a good day. Hope your week is good. And if you're in America, hope your 4th of July is great and good. I'll see you all next time.